Today we're taking a look at the Arctic I-35 ARGB Tower Heatsink. The I-35 is a budget-friendly but capable CPU cooler that you can get either in a standard non-RGB variant, the CO, or a continuously operational variant. This is useful for 24-7 type PCs, or the ARGB version, which I have here. Arctic sent this over for review, so I'll be checking it out on my Intel Alder Lake i5-12600K rig. I'll be going through what's included, the specs, the build quality, and my overall opinion of the i35 ARGB cooler. The i35 is a versatile cooler in that it supports all of the mainstream Intel-based sockets, including LGA 1700, and it's boasting unlimited memory dim clearance, all while providing a good amount of cooling. The i35 consists of a four direct touch heat pipe design with 54 aluminum fins, which helps dissipate the heat. The cooler weighs in at 746 grams. It measures in at 91 millimeters long, 133 millimeters wide, and 158 millimeters tall. The cooler achieves a no interference type compatibility in terms of memory height because the heatsink is slightly offset away from the memory dims. The fan in the fan shroud itself is not overly thick, which helps contribute to the fan essentially not blocking any memory, including that first dim slot on a traditional four slot motherboard. The i35 ARGB has a sleek appearance in my opinion. Arctic chose to create this with a black coating on the outside edges of the fins, and the fan shroud is also all black. This color scheme should look good in a lot of gaming rigs. The fan built into the shroud is a 120mm fan. This fan can spin as low as 200 RPMs and all the way up to 1700 RPMs. At 1700 RPM, the fan will output a maximum of 0.3 sewn or somewhere between 14 to 16 dBA worth of sound. Arctic describes the fan as having the advantages of the pressure optimized models while still remaining quiet and efficient. This fan is of course illuminated with addressable RGB LEDs. The fan uses a 4-pin PWM and a 3-pin 5-volt RGB and power connection. The i35 comes with a 6-year warranty, which should give you peace of mind that you're going to be able to reuse this heatsink in the future with future compatible platforms. The installation of the i35 was relatively easy. Assembling the backplate and the standoffs was a breeze. I installed the heatsink outside of the case, which I generally recommend, but if you have access to the backside of the case when you mount the motherboard, this could actually be done inside of the case. In terms of my test system, I'm running an Intel i5-12600K with 16 gigabytes of DDR4, 3200 CL14 memory. This is on a gigabyte Z690 Gaming X motherboard, all inside of a Be Quiet Pure Base 500DX case. The system is being powered by a Be Quiet Pure Power 11 FM 850 watt power supply. The ambient temperature during the testing was about 18C or about 64 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit. For the stress testing, I like to run RealBench A-64 CPU tests and Prime95 to max out the heat and the power output. For each of the tests, I ran through the stock settings and with an overclock setting of 5.1 GHz on the P cores and 4.1 GHz on the E cores. The overclock setting has a 1.3 volt constant voltage set. Each of the tests for stock and overclock testing, as well as each of the applications, were run for one hour to obtain the average temperature. Starting off with the real bench stock testing, the P cores averaged 62.5C with the E cores averaging 59C. The overclocked and overvolted test produced an average P core temp of 70.3C with the E cores averaging 61C. Moving on to the A to 64 CPU testing, the stock P cores averaged 54C and the E cores averaged 52C. The overclock test saw the peak cores average 77.6C and the E cores averaged about 70C. Lastly, as I mentioned, I always do the Prime95 smallest FFT test. Stock, the peak cores averaged 70.3C and the E cores averaged 60C. For the overclocked test, the P core average went up to 89.3C with the E core average going up to 80C. In terms of temperatures during gaming, they're going to be all over the board, so I typically pick 3D Mark Time Spy. I loop this and take the average during my testing. The P cores averaged 51C and the E cores averaged 46C at stock. 
In the overclocked configuration, the P cores averaged 65.4C and the E cores averaged 57C. For the price, I think the i35 ARGB CPU cooler did quite well here on the i5-12600K, both stock and overclocked, in the temperature testing. I don't have an i7 on hand to test with, but it does seem like the i35 should be able to handle an i7-12700K, at least at stock speeds, if not with a small overclock. This should be enough for a 13600K as well. The build quality on the Arctic i35 ARGB cooler was good. There were no sharp edges, I didn't get any cuts when working with the heatsink or the mounting equipment. All of the mounting hardware was relatively easy to set up and install as well. The installation process was quick, definitely a benefit of air coolers. The fan shroud does come off and go back on with ease. In my case, I opted for the ARGB model here because I think that's the version most people are going to go for. If you're building this setup for a gaming build, you're definitely going to want that RGB goodness. If you're building a long-term use or 24x7 type setup, you probably want to go with that continuously operating or CO version of the i35. And if you just don't like RGB, you can go with the non-RGB version of the i35. The RGB looks good in my opinion, the cooling performance on my overclocked i5 was pretty good, and this cooler will give you a wide range of case and memory compatibility. If you like the styling on the i35 and you're looking for a decently capable tower cooler, I would definitely recommend checking this one out. I have links to the build and the cooler itself in the description below, so head down there and take a look. Until next time, enjoy your tech stuff.